Hi everyone, welcome to SJ's classes. I hope my video lessons are up to your expectations and that you are having a good time watching and listening to my video lessons that I upload on my YouTube channel. If you have any comments or clarifications to make regarding any of the topics I discuss, please do use the comment space underneath the videos I post on YouTube uh, for clarifications or even for commenting. This is part two of my discussions on Vailopoli Sri Dharamenon, a renowned poet of Malayalam literature and his poem The Son of Sahian. In the previous video lesson, which is part one, I introduced to you the poet Sri Dharamenon and also the poem The Son of Sahian. I also gave you my interpretations to the first few stanzas of the poem. After reading the first few stanzas, we understood that the setting of the poem is a temple and that a festival is progressing there. You have elephants, caparisoned elephants. You have tall torches and the entire Temple premise looks like a dapple valley in full bloom. There is a huge crowd that have come there as part of the festivities. They are enjoying the music that is there uh, in the temple premise. The music coming from the instruments playing in unison. There are also men who are sitting and chatting. And from the chatter, we understand that they can't just you know, ignore the magnificent sight that they are witnessing in the temple premise. For a moment, one of the elephants become agitated. And the priest, you know, he becomes terrified seeing this sight. And everyone hopes that this particular elephant is put to chains and that the mahat will keep this particular elephant under control. That is where we stopped in the previous video lesson. Let's continue. The perilous tusker's lofty brain, its darkness now aglow with the moony blaze of lunacy, considered least any of this. The perilous tusker's lofty brain, the perilous means the one who is in danger. The perilous tusker's lofty brain. Lofty means with great dignity of high value. The perilous tusker's lofty brain. You know, the tusker is de described as perilous, as something which is in danger because, you know, uh, it became agitated for a moment and uh, that makes it you know, uh, the person or the uh, animal that is in danger because there is, you know, a high chance that the mahat will enjoy it so as to bring it under control. The perilous tusker's lofty brain, its darkness now aglow, aglow means bright or radiant, aglow with the moony blaze of lunacy. Moony blaze means lighted by moon. You, you have the reference of the reference to the bright light of moon and it's it's in a lunatic stage as of now lunatic or lunacy means senseless behavior foolish behavior so with the moony blaze of lunacy considered least any of this so the elephant did not consider anyone or anything that is happening around it The reckless tusker makes its way, swaying large spotted ears, freedom flags in imagination. Now, this is the point from where we will start focusing on the ruminations of the elephant. Now, in my previous video lesson, I had stated that the poem is actually the wild ruminations of an elephant while at a festival. So this is where we will shift to the, those, those ruminations being done by the elephant. So the reckless tusker makes its way, swaying large spotted ears, 
freedom flags in imagination so it was like or it was as if the elephant was you know making a freedom struggle or thinking about freedom it was more or less ruminating about freedom probably it wanted to free itself from the fetters that bound him to the pillars it's when he he got you know uh, fettered himself shackled himself to the pillars that he started ruminating about the freedom that he used to enjoy earlier to the playful parts of its younger days on the foothills of sahian rich with spring in full bloom now from this stanza onwards we are actually you now going to see uh, all those uh, events that happened in the life of this particular tusker when it was young the freedom that it enjoyed the kind of rich life that it experienced while uh, it was free earlier in the woods through the playful pathways playful pathways can mean the carefree life it had earlier through the playful pathways of its younger days on the foothills of the sahian sahian is the western ghats in kerala we refer to the western ghats as as the sahian so it used to enjoy its younger days when it had freedom and it lived and survived in the foothills of sahian on the foothills of sahian rich with spring in full bloom the sahian was rich with spring and also it was in full bloom there was the entire place was rich with life now spring uh, it is a season of growth and it indicates life so you know there was the, the elephant was full of life or the elephant could feel that liveliness in him while he was or while he used to live at the foothills of sahian for an elephant of my metal is there a better haven to romp than this verdant valley ever alive and abundant so it is as if the elephant is you know making a rhetorical question he is thinking to himself for an elephant of my metal my metal means my courage or my strength is there a better haven haven is a safe place is there a better safe place to romp romp means to run or play is there a better haven to roam than this verdant valley verdant means you know where there is abundance of greenery where there is flourishing vegetation so is there a better haven to roam than this verdant valley ever alive and abundant so the elephant asked himself was there a better place than you know the sahian was there a better place than it where i could be free where i could be safe and the elephant describes the place as ever alive and abundant it was always alive and it was also in plentiful the mountain waga trees heavy with blossoms shower rubies the mountain breeze caresses the massive forehead so he is recollecting all that he experienced while he was uh, while he spent his uh, younger days uh, at the foothills of sahian the mountain waga trees i'm sure you are familiar with waga tree the mountain waga trees heavy with blossoms when they are, have fully blossomed when there are flowers on it uh, and the elephant felt like that the waga trees were showering rubies rubies are gems valuable stones gems so the elephant felt like you know when the flower fell from the tree it was more or less like you know rubies falling down from the tree waga tree and the mountain breeze caresses the massive forehead caress means you know an affectionate uh, stroking that is what uh, caress means so the mountain breeze seems to you know uh, caress his massive forehead the massive forehead refers to the forehead of the elephant so it was as if the wind was taking you know it was, it was uh, giving an affectionate stroke on the elephant the tender leaves softer than silk and delicate shoots of reeds and bamboo make for a delicious feast so these are what he used to have when he was at the when he used to live at the foothills of sahian the tender leaves softer than silk 
and delicate sh uh, shoots of reeds and bamboo. Reed means it's, it's a type of grass. Make for a delicious feast. These are what the elephant fed on or uh, what he used to feed himself with when he used to live at the fort of Sahian, when he was at the Sahian. The hands of playful forest brooks invite him with water pure, surpassing celestial nectar. And you know, in the previous stanza, he spoke about the things that he used to have. And in this stanza, he talks about the brooks, the streams of water you know, that used to invite him you know, uh, to take a plunge into it and also to take a sip from it. And he describes the water in the brooks, in the streams, as something that surpasses celestial nectar. The water, you know, it tasted even better than celestial nectar or divine nectar. As before, to rebel in these delights decides spring in his head. Now a raucous beehive swarming with droning thoughts. So the elephant desires for the spring season. Or he wants to go back to his younger days where he used to where he used to enjoy or experience freedom. So he wishes to revel in these delights. Delights means the you know the the to enjoy the water of the brooks, to eat the tender leaves, delicate shoots of reeds and bamboo, you know, to see the sight of the vaga flowers falling down just like rubies, the mountain breeze to experience it. So he wishes to be there at the foot of Sahian, at the foothills of Sahian and enjoy the spring as he used to do it earlier during his younger days. But as of now, his head is like a raucous beehive swarming with droning thoughts. So his head is like a beehive. Raucous means loud and harsh. You know how a beehive is and the sound that comes from a beehive. So his head is like a beehive now and it is swarming not with bees but with droning thoughts. You know, droning thoughts means uh, numerous thoughts, thoughts you know, in, in great numbers. Splattering his massive feet with milky sap crushed in his tread, the gigantic tusker strides the wild parts. So again we are back to his ruminations. Splattering his massive feet with milky sap crushed in his tread. So here you see the sight of the elephant taking a walk. He is treading with his massive feet and he is crushing everything that is on the path. He crushes and, yeah, and from water that is beneath his giant foot, you know, the, the, the milky sap comes out of it. The gigantic tusker strides the wild paths. So here he recollects the paths he used to walk. What does the sapphire carry? The nascent scent of pala blossoms or the luring fragrance of the wild palms besorting juices? What does the sapphire carry? Sapphire means a slight wind. And what does this wind carry with it? It has a smell. And the elephant tries to guess out this particular smell or scent. Is it the nascent scent of pala blossoms? No, no, the elephant thinks. Is it the scent of pala flowers that has just blossomed? Or the luring fragrance of the wild palms besorting juices? You know, besorting means you know the juice that boosts you or takes you out of your senses. So is it the scent of Pala flowers or is it the scent of the palm's juice? Is it the enticing odor of the wild civet cat? The tusker paused a while taking in the breeze with his trunk. So again he thinks is it the is 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 it the enticing odor of the wild civet cat? So is it the scent of pala blossoms or is it the fragrance of palm juice? Or is it the enticing order? Enticing order means a highly attractive order. Order means scent, smell. Is it a highly attractive scent of the wild civet cat? Now, civet cat is a cat-like mammal, mammal and that secretes musk which is used in perfumes. 
So the smell is it coming from the civet cat? The tusker paused a while, taking in the breeze with his trunk. So he takes a moment to you know relish this particular scent that he is getting at the moment. To his astonishment, he feels vigor oozing out of his limbs in slow trickles like water draining from rocks. So immediately the animal feels that it is losing out vigor from his limbs. It was like he was losing all his strength and this was happening in slow trickles. Slow trickles means drop by drop, you know, bit by bit. So it was as if the elephant, the animal was losing his strength bit by bit like water draining from rocks and there is a simile there and he compares this losing of vigor oozing out of vigor with the oozing out of water from rocks did he eat a deadly wine or did a fatal ailment of the forest dark interiors plague his body then we start to ruminate what happened to this elephant did he eat a deadly wine wine means a climber did he eat some poisonous plant or did a fatal ailment, fatal means something which brings you death, ailment means disease, now has some disease infected his body, disease which are unfamiliar to us, that is why the poet says of the forest dark interiors, did it plague his body, which means did it infect his body, the huge branches caught in his trunk, collapse in a quick succession on his lofty forehead, Red soil sprinkled like pollen. Um, and from the uh, previous stanza, we understood that the, the elephant was, or uh, elephant seemed to be losing his strength. And water that he was holding with his trunk falls on his lofty forehead. The huge branches caught in his trunk. So perhaps he was trying to maintain his balance and he was using this huge branch uh, to maintain his balance. Or, or perhaps he was carrying branches in his trunk. And this collapses in quick succession on his lofty forehead and it falls down onto his lofty forehead and red soil sprinkled like pollen. So uh, we understand that something has happened and the branches that he was holding onto, you know, it collapses onto his forehead and red soil gets, soil gets sprinkled like pollen grains on his forehead. When he rubs his irate temple against the pala tree, the milk fluid oozes with a bloody stink. So he tries to get rid of this soil that had fallen onto his face, onto his forehead. And he does this by rubbing his, you know, uh, irate temple. Irate means angry. He becomes angry at this. And he tries to get rid of this red soil by uh, rubbing his uh, irate temple. Temple is the flat area on your forehead. So he tries to get rid of the red soil by rubbing his temple onto a pala tree against the pala tree and when he does this the milky fluid oozes with a bloody stink so there comes a milky fluid out of the pala tree and there is a bloody stink a bloody smell that come along with it drained of strength yet fiercely potent is his body the mind hungers to slay though yearning to love and the elephant as of now it has been drained of strength but it is it has a great potential you know it has a great potential to commit some uh, angry uh, murder i mean uh, commit some grave act of killing the mind hungers to slay it decides to kill though yearning to love but it also desires to love it also wants to love so he is in a state of, you know, he is experiencing mixed emotions. He, want to, he wants to kill, at the same time he wants to commit love. Ahead he treads, morose and weary, along the wild paths, fragrant with the footfall of spring. Then what we see is that the elephant walks alone. He treads means he walks, morose and weary, means angry and tired. Along the wild paths, fragrant with the footfall of spring. You know, it is fragrant with the footfall. Sorry, it is fragrant with the footfall of spring. You know, footfall means the sound of someone walking. So at, at every moment, there is something that, you know, uh, evokes the imagery or sound of the spring season. And the elephant can, you know, experience these sights and sounds. 
and along that path which evokes uh, images and sights of uh, spring the elephant strolls he treads ahead in fright the leopard hides in a wild bush the heart does not wish to pierce and toss him with the tusks so seeing the elephant the, the leopard hides in a wild bush the heart does not wish to pierce and toss him with the tusk now perhaps the elephant would have attacked this leopard but as of now its heart doesn't let him do that the heart does not wish to pierce and toss him with the tusks with tails drawn inward the cowardly apes flee they will not be teasing under cover to start a wrangle so as of now none of the animals want to you know engage in a combat with the elephant now perhaps all the animals know that the elephant is in a bad mood it is in an irritated condition so everybody is drawing backwards they are fleeing back the leopard you know it uh, it drew back it uh, hid itself in a wild bush now it's the cowardly apes who flee at the sight of the elephant and they don't want to start a wrangle they don't want to start a quarrel with the elephant the bison frolic in the wild lakes splashing around with their horns bison is what you call uh, in malayalam as kaatupoth so the bison frolic in the wild lakes it's enjoying its uh, in the uh, wild lakes splashing around with their horns boars rub a burrow boars are wild pigs boars rub and burrow into tree trunks with their tusks so they have their long pointed tooth and they are using this tooth you know to uh, burrow into the tree trunks the ears hear but refuse to absorb the honey tunes of huntsmen dripping from their tree top huts the elephant could hear you know, the the tunes of the huntsmen the the sound that came from the huntsmen uh, who had built tree top huts but he didn't want to listen to them the daylight waned to nourish with milk the sprawling shadows of trees tender darkness closed in again and the day comes to an end and it's night time look at how beautifully the poet describes the night time the daylight waned to nourish with milk here milk refers to the moonlight and the shadows created by moonlight out of the trees to nourish the milk to nourish with milk the sprawling shadows of trees sprawling means spreading out in different directions so now you have the moonlight that you know uh, spreads shadows of trees at you know across different directions then the darkness closed in again so you have darkness that have has befallen again it's night time the wings descend looking for their nesting nestling boys the talk is peacock fans out his spotted plumes the wings descend wings here refers to birds it's a synecdoche that has been employed here synecdoche is a figure of uh, a speech it's a poetical device that you use in which you know a particular part of something is used to represent the whole here you have the wings that are representative of the entire bird so it's a synecdoche the wings descend looking for their nestling boughs nestling boughs means the branches on which they have their nests on the turkish peacock turkish is a shade of blue and uh, blue tinged with green the turkish peacock fans out his spotted plumes so he had you know sp uh, spread his wings earlier now it has you know uh, brought it together plumes means feathers the wild jasmines bloom diffusing fragrance in the gushing moonlight goddesses of the jungle dance it's night time and you have all these you know activities going on as part of the night time the settling time the wild jasmine bloom diffusing fragrance so you get the fragrance the scent of the wild jasmine in the gushing moonlight goddesses of the jungle dance so it's like you have you know uh, the goddesses of you, you can see the sight of the goddesses of the jungle uh, dancing along in the rise in the rush of the nocturnal hunters small twigs crack the scavenger beast howl in glee dreaming of carcasses 
So in the rush of the nocturnal hunters, so once night falls, you have this nocturnal hunters coming in. Nocturnal means, you know, ones that become active during the night. In the rush of the nocturnal hunters, small twigs crack. So you have these small branches which are laid on the ground and when these nocturnal hunters come out, you know, they stamp on these small twigs and they break. That is the sound being described here. Small twigs crack, the scavenger beast. Now, scavenger beast means beasts that feed on decaying matter. The scavenger beast howl in glee, dreaming of carcasses. You have this howling sound being let out by uh, the scavenger beast and they do this dreaming of carcasses. Carcasses means you know, dead bodies of animals. So they believe that they will get some good food today. They will find the dead bodies of some animals today. They will get some decaying matter and they could fill their belly with it. So this hope makes them you know, howl. What mars the quietude of this dark night? Is it the piercing word of numerous lamenting cicadas? What mars the quietude of this dark night? So what destroys the quietude of this dark night? Quietude means a state of peace and quietness. So what is it that disturbs the, the, the uh, peace and quietness that is there in the place? Is it the piercing ver? Ver is a sound of something in rapid motion. You know how uh, cicadas, you know, they uh, let out this huge high pitched noise. Cicadas are chewed, as you call it in Malayalam. And is it the sound of these cicadas that is disturbing the quietude of this dark night? In a moment, the varied instruments clamoring in the festive ground awaken his consciousness. So that is when we return to the present. Now the elephant was ruminating on its past life, its younger days, while he was at the uh, foothills of Sahyan. Suddenly, the sound of the instruments, it brings him back, back to consciousness. The varied instruments clamoring in the festive ground. Clamor means to make loud sounds. Now, as of now, we understand that all this was a dream. A dream or the ruminations of the elephant. The valorous tusker plays little heed, taking it to be the merry croaking of wild thoughts from a puddle during rains. The valorous tusker, valorous means courageous. The valorous tusker pays little heed. Heed means attention. So this courageous tusker gives little attention to whatever that is happening around him. And for the elephant, the clamoring of the instruments seem like croaking of wild thoughts. Wild thoughts of frogs. And it seemed to him the entire festivities, the clamoring sounds of the you know, instruments playing in unison, it felt like croaking of frogs from a puddle during trains. Puddle is a small body of standing water. You know how these frogs croak during rains. So this entire festivity, the sounds that come as part of this festivity, seem to him like croaking of the frogs. The tall torches blazing in a row, mere clusters of fireflies. So if the sound was like the croaking of wild torches, the tall torches uh, felt like, or for the elephant, it, uh, the, the tall torches was like, you know, uh, mere fireflies. The tall torches blazing in a row, mere clusters of fireflies, illuminating the forest lush foliage in the hours of night. So again, he goes back to his ruminations and uh, he hasn't, you know, got himself completely, uh, he hasn't gotten himself completely away from this rumination that he had earlier. And that is why uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the clamoring sound uh, felt like uh, uh, the sound of wild toads and, you know, the, the lit torches looked like fireflies. And all these seem to illuminate the forest lush foliage. It seemed to him like these you know, torches, it was lighting up. It lit the greenery that was there in the forest. The night recedes across the forest boughs. The day weaves webs of light. It's almost morning. So he again goes back to his rumination. It was night time when uh, earlier. We understood that from the description that we got in the earlier stanzas. As of now, it has become morning. The night recedes. It means it's almost morning. Across the forest boughs, 
the day weaves webs of light. Look at how the poet describes the passage of light through the trees and branches in the forest. Look at how he describes the morning time. It's as if the day is weaving webs of light across the forest boughs. Boughs means branches. The fear of gazelles waking up behind tangles of vines peeps set stealthily to see if there is some peril. The gazelles. Gazelles is a type of deer. Now they have these pointed horns. I hope you have seen it. The fear of gazelles waking up behind tangles of vines. So that is where they slept the night. And they have woken up as of now. They are awake and they peep steadily. Peep means to look secretly. So they look around secretly to see if there is some peril. Peril means danger. So they are, you know, uh, scanning the perimeter uh, so as to look for some sort of danger. What is this lingering scent along this new forest track? So familiar, so fresh leading the soul to salvation. So again, you have the question of the sin that we confronted a few stanzas earlier. Uh, the, we saw the elef elephant ruminating on the scent. Was it the scent of pala flowers? Or was it the scent of palm juice? Or was it the scent of civet cat? So again, you have the recollection of that scent. What is this lingering scent? Lingering scent means a scent that remains or that one that which is present throughout. What is this lingering scent along this new forest track? So familiar, so fresh. So this scent is so familiar to the elephant. It's so fresh. And uh, for the elephant, the scent is something that leads the soul to salvation. The wounds of broken branches become visible. The footprints as striking as lotus leaves. So it's morning time. And uh, you can see... You know, some of the branches have been, you know, plucked down. Um, it was probably done by the elephants uh, who took this path earlier. And you can also see these footprints. And the sight of the footprints are as striking as lotus leaves. The poet says that the sight of the footprints and the sight of lotus, they are equally sensational or striking. The steaming green dung, what luck. Thirsty elephants have trod this path towards the stream. So, and there is also a fresh dung, fresh elephant dung. And that shows that the elephants have taken this path earlier. What luck. It's very fortunate or unfortunate. And the speaker says what luck. Thirsty elephants have trod this path towards the stream. Then he hears the loud trumpet reverberating in the festive ground. Or is it the tusker's call from afar? For a moment, you know, we are brought back to the temple and the festivities happening there. The elephant, he hears the loud trumpet and he confuses it between the sound of the trumpet or it it, it might be the, the, the tusker's call from afar. You know, so you cannot you know, distinguish between the sound. The sound is of a trumpet, but that elephant, as it is ruminating, as it is dreaming, cannot differentiate bit between whether uh, if it is the sound of the trumpet or is it a tusker calling from afar. So let's stop there. Uh, the remaining stanzas will be discussed in the next video lesson. Thank you so much for watching.